comparative advantage and gains from trade another very testable item we need to understand here the distinction between what's called absolute advantage and comparative advantage country a has an absolute advantage over country b which is a trading partner in producing machinery if country a can produce machinery at a lower cost or use fewer resources this example illustrates a few points when we talk about absolute advantage we are comparing two countries in the context of a particular good or service and this definition is fairly straightforward if a can produce machinery more efficiently i.e at a lower cost or with fewer resources then we say that a has an absolute advantage what about comparative advantage country a has a comparative advantage over country b in producing machinery if country a can produce machinery at a lower opportunity cost the critical difference between these two statements is this phrase opportunity cost and to understand opportunity cost let's look at example 3 in the curriculum this is another simple but extremely useful example suppose there are only two countries india and the united kingdom india exports cloth to the uk and imports machinery and the output per worker per day is shown over here this little table effectively gives us the productivity of both countries with respect to machinery and cloth we are asked the following questions which country has the absolute advantage in the production of machinery and does that country also have comparative advantage if we look at the uk then it produces four machines per worker per day whereas india produces only two machines per worker per day clearly the uk is more efficient therefore the uk has the absolute advantage what about comparative advantage to understand comparative advantage we need to come up with opportunity cost and opportunity cost will involve a simple division exercise so you will do either 4 divided by 8 or 8 divided by 4 and many students get confused about what to do so i will tell you how to solve this when we are looking at the opportunity cost for machines remember two things number 1 whenever you have the cost of something then it should be for one unit of that thing that thing here is machines so what is the cost of one unit of machines we are talking about the cost in terms of cloth since this is an opportunity cost we need to compare machines and cloth to have one unit of machines you need to have the number for machines in the denominator remember whenever you have a fraction the denominator represents one unit so to have this one unit you need to have machines in the denominator so you put 4 over here 8 over here and you get 2 so the opportunity cost of machines is 2 units of cloth what this means is that in the uk if you do not produce one machine if you give up one machine what you will get is two units of cloth so the opportunity cost of machines in the uk is two whereas the opportunity cost of machines in india is 16 over 2 which is 8 in other words if you give up one machine you can make eight units of cloth in india so when you look at opportunity costs clearly the opportunity cost of producing machines in uk is much lower than the opportunity cost of producing machines in india that number is 8 so in terms of comparative advantage we can say that the uk also has 
a comparative advantage relative to India in producing machines. Now you can do the same exercise for cloth and figure out which country has the absolute advantage and which country has the comparative advantage and then you can go through the solution in the curriculum. In case you don't have the curriculum easily handy, the quick answer would be that India has both the absolute advantage and the comparative advantage with respect to cloth. So if the two countries trade, clearly it makes more sense for India to specialize in cloth, the UK to specialize in machinery, and then India exports cloth, imports machinery, the UK exports machinery and imports cloth. This slide demonstrates the gains from trade. The curriculum gives a lot of detail and you can go over those details if you have time. But here is the main point. On the left, we are shown the autarkic production and autarkic consumption. This would be the production and consumption assuming no trade. And notice that in this scenario, everything that the UK produces is also consumed by the UK and the same holds for India. The total production of machines and cloth is given right here. And again, the production and consumption would be the same. In a post-trade world, notice what happens. The number of machines produced in the UK is up. That increases from 200 to 400. The consumption is also up. What about cloth? The UK here is not producing any cloth, but it is now able to consume more cloth because it can get cloth cheaper from India. As far as India is concerned, it stops producing machines and now gets machines from the UK because it can get machines cheaper. And notice that the consumption of machines is up by 60. As far as cloth is concerned, now the production has increased substantially from 800 to 1600 and the consumption has also increased. So in a world where there is trade, the consumption in both countries has gone up. So we can say that both countries overall are better off. Here is another point to consider which is related to prices. A country's gains from trade are more if terms of trade are closer to partners autarkic prices than to its own autarkic prices. And I emphasize this here because when countries trade, then obviously there is a certain amount of gain. But how much is that gain? Let's go back to some terms that we saw earlier. Terms of trade was basically the price of exports divided by price of imports. We've already talked about this concept of autarkic prices. To understand this, think about India and UK. India is exporting clothes. If the average price of clothes in India is say 5 rupees and the same clothes can be exported to the UK and the price of clothes here is 5 pounds which is substantially more than the price in India then obviously India will benefit a lot when it trades with the UK. So notice in my example, the autarkic prices of clothes are much higher in the UK relative to India. So when India exports, it can export at a price much higher than the domestic price and clearly then India will benefit. There are other ways of looking at this also, but now that you have understood one scenario, I would suggest that you remember this statement. Here is a graphical depiction of gains from trade. The curriculum spends a fair amount of time on this material, but I will just give you a summary because this material is not emphasized in the learning objectives or in the practice problems. And you will see this content at level two. So I think the probability of being tested on this at level one is low. But nevertheless, I'll just say a few important things. 
what we are looking at here these dark lines are called the PPF or production possibilities frontier if we look at panel A which is the UK if the UK puts all its energy in producing clothes then it will produce this many clothes and no cars if the UK puts all its energy in producing clothes, then it will produce this many clothes and zero machines. As the UK gives up the production of clothes, it will start producing some machines. And as we keep going to the right, the production of clothes goes down and the production of machines goes up. Notice over here, if all the energy goes in the production of machines, then the UK can produce this many machines and no clothes. So this is a production possibilities frontier, which is showing the trade-off between clothes and machines. If there is no trade, then the consumption would also have to be based on the PPF. A similar picture is shown for India. And just graphically, these pictures depict that India is better at clothes and the UK is better at machines. For India also, if there is no trade, then the consumption would also have to be on the PPF. But if these two countries do trade, then the consumption can be outside the PPF. And when we are outside the PPF, then the utility is more. So that is another way of illustrating that trade will benefit both countries. The last part of this section deals with the Ricardian model and the heckscher ullin model. And I would suggest that you learn all the points that I make on this slide. First, let's talk about the Ricardian model. To understand the Ricardian model, let's consider first what Adam Smith said. Adam Smith said that we should trade if we have absolute advantage. In other words, if our cost of production is lower or if we are more efficient, then we should trade. But David Ricardo built on that and said we should trade even if we have a comparative advantage. And this is important because what Ricardo is saying is that if you don't have an absolute advantage but you do have a comparative advantage then it still makes sense for you to trade the next important point is that in the ricardian model labor is the only variable factor of production this does not mean that capital does not exist capital is there but in this simplistic model we assume that capital is fixed According to the Ricardian model, differences in technology lead to differences in labor productivity, and this is the key source of comparative advantage. So, remember these points. We don't need to get too detailed into this model. As long as you know this, you will be in good shape. What about the other model? That is called the heckscher olin model. In this model, both capital and labor are variable. And how is that different from the Ricardian model? In the Ricardian model, only labor was variable. Goods produced with varying combinations of labor and capital. So this is just an implication of the first point. Given that both capital and labor are variable, a given good can be produced with different combinations of labor and capital. Differences in the relative endowment of these factors are the source of comparative advantage. If we go back to our UK and India example, what we are saying here is that if a country is well endowed with a certain factor of production, for example, let's say that India has a high amount of labor, then it makes sense for India to focus on industries such as the clothes industry, which is very labor intensive. And it makes more sense for the UK to focus on industries which are more capital intensive. Assuming here that the UK is better endowed in capital relative to India. This model 
allows for income redistribution through trade in the sense that if you take India and the clothes industry in India develops, then the labor in India, which is working in this industry, will become richer. The income levels will go up. And the final point, which might be testable, is that in this particular model, the heckscher olin model, technology in each industry is the same across countries, but varies between industries. What that means is, if you have the clothes industry in India, or the clothes industry in the UK, the assumption of this model is that the clothes industry uses the same technology regardless of which country that industry is in. However, a different industry such as the machines industry can have a different technology or different levels of technology relative to clothes. So, Again, technology in each industry is the same regardless of which country the industry is in, but technologies can vary across different industries. Here are the sorts of questions that you might see related to the two models that we just talked about. And this is a test of your short term memory. On the actual exam, you will have MCQ options which will help jog your memory but I'm not giving you those options right now. What determines comparative advantage in the Ricardian model? And we just talked about it. It is labor productivity which determines comparative advantage in this particular model. What is the relationship between gains from trade, terms of trade, and autarkic prices in the Ricardian model? And we talked about this a few slides earlier. The gains from trade are high if the terms of trade are similar or closer to the autarkic prices in the trading partner. In other words, if you have India and the UK and the terms of trade, which are an indication of price of exports over price of imports, if India can export clothes, at prices that are closer to the price of clothes in the UK, which is the autarkic prices of clothes in the UK, then India has more to gain from trade. According to the heckscher olin model, which factor benefits from free trade, the abundant factor or the scarce factor? And here, the larger benefit goes to the abundant factor. If the abundant factor in India is labor, then trade means that there is more work for labor intensive industries, which means that this particular factor will benefit.